Toyota has developed a very clever all-wheel drive system. In fact, it's the first new all-wheel drive system Toyota has created for a sports car in over 20 years. It can send as much as 60% of the engine's torque to the front wheels, or it can send as much as 70% of the torque to the rear wheels. So how does it do it? Hello everyone and welcome. I had a lengthy conversation with the chief engineer of the GR Corolla and as a result we're going to be learning all about the all-wheel drive system used in the GR Corolla as well as the GR Yaris. Alright, so let's start off with a simplified diagram and overview of how this all-wheel drive system works. So we've got our engine sending power through a transmission that is ultimately going to be rotating this transfer case or bevel box, which is going to be powering these front wheels. So you can see here in purple that will rotate, causing this front differential to rotate the front tires. Now this can be an open differential or you can opt for a torsion limited slip differential in both the front and the rear. Now this bevel box is also rotating a drive shaft which is headed towards the back. So simultaneously it is always spinning this shaft as well as the front drive shafts for the front tires. So that drive shaft heading towards the back then has a clutch pack at the back so it can engage or disengage from that rear differential which is then powering the rear wheels. The beauty of this all-wheel drive system is that it allows for very different torque splits. So for example, if this clutch pack were to be fully open, you'd basically have a front-wheel drive vehicle. Now that's pretty much never going to happen. We'll get into some exceptions, uh, but you're pretty much never going to have that 100 versus zero in the rear torque split. Uh, your options are front, which is a front bias of 60% at the front, 40 at the rear, track, which splits everything 50-50, and rear, which sends 30 30% of the torque to the front and 70%, so the majority of the torque to that rear axle, really lively for some nice back road feel. So how do you create these very precise torque splits? Well, the key to understanding this comes down to this drive shaft as well as this clutch pack. So this drive shaft right here is rotating with a 0.7% faster gear ratio. And so what that means is if you were to take this vehicle and put it up on jack stands and drive it at a set RPM, and let's say your wheels, your front wheels are spinning at 1000 RPM and this clutch pack is closed up. Well, your rear wheels are going to be spinning at 1007 RPM. So the rear wheels, if this clutch pack were to be fully locked, would be rotating 0.7% faster than the front wheels. And that interaction occurs because of this gearing right here. Now, that's not actually what happens because when all of these wheels are on the ground, of course they always want to be spinning at the same speed. Otherwise you're gonna have that bind happening uh, within the drivetrain. So what really happens is both wheels while they're on the ground are going to be spinning at the same speed. So let's say the front's at 1000 RPM, the rear is also at 1000 RPM. Where the slip occurs is within this clutch pack. So you're always gonna be having that 0.7% slip occur within this clutch pack as it is transferring that torque to the rear. Okay, but how does a 0.7% difference in gear ratio translate to all of these various different torque splits? Well, the best way to think about this is by thinking of this clutch pack as a brake. Now, what do I mean? Okay, so remember, the rear axle, as you start to engage this clutch pack, it wants to spin up this rear axle. The rear axle wants to spin faster than the front axle. Another way of thinking about this is that when you start to engage this clutch pack, the front axle wants to rotate slower than the rear axle. In other words, it's a brake. It's trying to slow down this front axle. So what's happening is you're creating engine torque and you're sending that engine torque to the front as well as the back. And then this clutch pack right here is causing you to try and reduce that front wheel speed, meaning break that front axle. And so you're taking away, you're subtracting torque from that front axle axle and instead that torque is going to the rear axle. All right, let's go over an example to help clarify this. So let's say we are in front mode, meaning we want a 60-40 split. And let's say our engine is producing 100 pound-feet of torque. In other words, we want 60 pound-feet going to the front and 40 pound-feet going to the rear. Well, that engine produces 100 pound-feet of torque, and if this clutch pack is open, pretty much all of that torque is going to the front axle. Now remember, this clutch pack acts like a brake, and we know that we're in front mode, so a control module 
module tells this clutch pack that because we have 100 pound-feet of torque to provide a subtractive torque, a braking force of 40 pound-feet. So then we have 100 minus 40, that gives us 60 pound-feet on the front axle, and then that braking torque is delivered to the rear axle, so we have 40 pound-feet on the rear axle. So if you want to increase the torque that is delivered to the rear axle, for example, for using track mode and sending 50% or rear mode and sending 70%, well, you're simply going to be creating a larger subtractive torque using this clutch pack from the front axle. So the more pressure you provide within this clutch pack, the more torque, the more resistance you have on this front axle, and as a result, you're subtracting more torque away from that front axle and delivering it to the rear axle. Now, in reality, it's a bit more complicated than how I make it sound because what you're actually monitoring is what is your engine torque, what's your gear ratio of what gear you're in, and what's your final drive ratio, and then from that wheel torque, what is the actual torque you need to reduce using this clutch pack in order to create that 60-40 split, or 50-50 split, or 30-70 split. And that is all constantly being adjusted as your engine load changes, as your gear changes, in order to maintain that ideal ratio of whatever mode you have selected. Now you might wonder why 0.7%? What's so special about this number? And really all you need is a speed differential, just like how brakes work, right? You have a rotor spinning uh, at a very high speed and then you have a brake pad that presses against that that isn't moving and so you have that speed differential and thus you can create friction and thus braking force. The same idea applies with this clutch pack. All you need is a speed differential. The thing is you don't want to go with a really high speed differential because that means more heat is going to be going into that clutch pack and thus more wear. Remember, this clutch pack is pretty much always engaged and so there's always going to be that slip occurring. But in this case, we're only talking about a 0.7% speed differential between the two and so within that clutch pack, that's really not that much slip, thus you're not going to generate that much heat. Um, so reliability becomes a concern when you hear that a clutch pack is always going to be slipping. I think people really underestimate just how durable wet multi-plate clutches are. In this case, I count 12 clutch discs uh, and also that's going to be soaked in oil, so it's a very durable, very reliable thing. And also we have very low slip, just 0.7% uh, that is occurring. So there's not going to be that much heat really generated within it. However, let's get to a worst case scenario. What if there is a lot of heat generated within that clutch pack? What are some of the levers that you can pull on? One of the things I found really interesting is that one of the things they can do on a straightaway, say you're driving on a track and this thing is starting to get really hot. On straightaways, where you really don't need any power being sent to the rear wheels, they can can fully open up this clutch pack so that it's not going to have so much heat being generated. Uh, so that you're basically just driving front wheel drive on the straightaways, you're still putting down the full amount of power, traction is an issue at these high speeds. So on those long straights, uh, you can actually open that up to help remove some heat from it and help cool it down. Uh, that's one lever that you can pull on. Of course, if it just gets to the absolute limit and things are getting way too hot within the clutch pack, you can provide caution you can start to disable things, you can open up that clutch pack and say, hey, you need to chill out, the thing's overheating, uh, you, you can't keep driving at these speeds and we're not going to allow it. So there are levers where you can pull off and say, we're not going to let you destroy this thing, uh, but realistically speaking, it's not going to be an issue with heat because of the low amount of slip and the size and number of clutch plates. It's also worth mentioning that going down a straight, if it does decide to help cool the clutch pack and open it up and thus make the vehicle front wheel drive, the second you have any steering input or yaw, it re-engages that clutch. Now I was curious, would it be possible to send 100% of the torque to the rear wheels uh, and thus having a rear wheel drive vehicle with that 0-100 torque split? And I was told that it's not possible in low gears. Again, going back to this acting like a brake and having this subtraction nature of torque from the front axle. There's simply too much torque in these low gears in order for it to subtract all of that torque using the clutch pack. I was told it might be possible in gears 4, 5, and 6 where you have a lower wheel torque. So for example, if you're looking at your first gear wheel torque, you've got 273 pound-feet of torque, multiplying that by your first gear ratio, multiplying that by your final drive ratio, and that gives you about 3,900 pound-feet of torque. Simply too much for this 
this clutch pack to subtract. But in sixth gear, 273 pound-feet of torque, multiplying that by your sixth gear and your final drive ratio, and that gives you 850 pound-feet of torque. And that's something that might be manageable for it to subtract from the front and thus have it acting like a 0-100% split. Now, it doesn't actually do this, right? These are the three modes right here that you'll actually be driving in. Now, what about drifting? Will it drift? One of the interesting things the chief engineer told me was that if you're on a high grip surface, you don't actually want to use rear mode if you're attempting to drift. And so you might intuitively think, okay, rear mode 3070, that's what I wanna use if I'm trying to drift this car. And so the reason he said, why well, you'd be better to choose track or front, especially track with that 50-50 split, is that you're trying to get all four wheels to spin in a drift, not just the rear. So if you go with rear and you have this 3070 torque split and most of the torque goes to the rear axle and you get that rear axle to kick out, perhaps you yank the handbrake, well you don't have enough torque going to the front and so the front is still going to maintain grip and so it's not going to be overloaded and if the front isn't overloaded it's going to pull you out of that drift because it's all-wheel drive. So you need all four to spin and so on a high grip surface it's actually better to go with something like track or front where you're sending more torque to the front to help get all four wheels to be rotating. Pretty challenging considering how much power we have in this scenario, uh, but that is your best bet. And then if you're in a low grip surface, sure, you can go for rear, you can go for front, you can go for track, you're gonna get these all to spin up. And he did say that occasionally, in these really low grip scenarios, like on ice and snow, you might have moments where this clutch actually locks up and these rear wheels are thus spinning a little bit faster than the front. It's not intentionally doing that, but it might happen occasionally. Uh, remember, what it's trying to do is always keep the front and the rear wheel speeds relative to the ground to be the same. Uh, however, you know, you're know you going to have that slip occur within the clutch pack. Occasionally, it could happen that it locks up in a icy scenario, so you could actually get you know a bit of a nice slide because your rear wheels are actually spinning faster than the front. Now, once my GR Corolla review is live, I will provide a link to that right here. And in the meantime, if you're wondering, how is it possible for a transmission to have two different final drive ratios? Well, I've got another video here that explains how you could have two different final drive ratios on the same transmission. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.